Hi and welcome to the next in our series of My Song is Love Unknown about the songs and hymns of Lent and Easter and today I'm going to be talking about Graham Kendrick's The Servant King. That song was written for the interdenominational Christian gathering Spring Harvest, which takes place every year during the Easter holiday. Graham Kendrick has said, Servant King was the title of Spring Harvest, and it was sent out to several writers, including myself. I just found that funny phrase inspiring. We weren't being asked, can you write a song with the words Servant King in it? But it was those two words, Servant King, that set the juices flowing. Because they were opposites. And if you're a lyricist, opposites always kickstart ideas. Those two words don't normally sit together. So I just started to unpack that whole story. The obvious part of the story is the incarnation from heaven you came, helpless babe. And it sort of unfolded from there. The song is full of wonderful imagery, including one of my favorite lines, hands that flung stars into space. 
to cruel nails surrendered. But in this reflection, I want to actually pick out the, the phrase, the servant king. This is our God, the servant king. He calls us now to follow him, to bring our lives as daily offering of worship to the servant king. Our God made the decision to leave behind a throne and to come to earth to be a servant. And he wants us to become a servant like him, so that one day we can join him on his throne. Over and over in the Gospels, Jesus reminds us that in order to achieve the kind of greatness that God wants us to have, we must reject the kind of greatness that the world has to offer. Over and over again, the writers of the New Testament remind us that Jesus calls us to take up our cross and to follow in his footsteps. Now, one aspect of Christianity that marks it out from among other world religions is that no one is born a Christian. Having Christian parents doesn't make you a Christian, like sitting in a garage doesn't make you a car. Each person, as they grow up, must reach the point where they make their own decision to accept or reject Jesus. And that decision may be made at a specific point in someone's life. It may be something akin to a growing realization over a period of time that Jesus is Lord. But ultimately, at some point, that decision has to be made. And there's no getting away from it. There's no getting away from the contradiction that is at the heart to which the servant king calls us, that life. Because becoming a Christian is perhaps the easiest and most straightforward thing possible. Yet being a Christian is perhaps one of the most difficult. Because as Jesus has made it plain, it means picking up that cross. It means bearing those scars that mark us as branded as servants of Jesus. Following Jesus is as easy as saying yes to God, as easy as recognizing that we need Jesus in our life, as easy as recognizing that only Jesus can lead us into heaven, as easy as declaring that Jesus is Lord of our life. And Jesus accepts us just as we are, just where we are. Simply believe in Jesus and you're made right with God and given a place in heaven. Such is the grace of God that that is all he asks, a simple yes. And yet, easy as it is, that's only the beginning of the journey. Jesus may accept us just as we are, but he doesn't leave us there any more than he left his disciples where they were. He called the disciples to leave their previous lives and to follow him. And at the Last Supper, he took up a towel and washed their feet to show them what the life to which he called them was about, service. He calls us to live out this life as he did, as servants of one another. And like him, to be willing to carry a cross. This is the example that he came to gave us. Take up your cross and follow me. And that may seem a difficult thing to do, and it is. How can it be otherwise? It's a cross, but it's always worth remembering that Jesus is always there. He's one step ahead of us. And all we have to do is to keep focused on Jesus to be sure that we don't lose our way. As the writer of the letter to the Hebrews tells us, Run with endurance the race set out for us, keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. And difficult though it may seem to take up that cross, we do it because that's what Jesus, our God, our servant King asks of us. And he wouldn't ask it of us if he didn't believe we could do it with his grace. There's a prayer that priests say when they are preparing the altar for communion. It's said at the point when the water is mixed with the wine as the altar is prepared. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share 
in Christ's divinity, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. And that ultimately is what the servant king came to do, to share our humanity so that we may one day come to share his divinity. The servant king left his throne above and came to show us what it means to be truly human, to show us what it means to truly live and how to truly live. And so that we can do that, he died on the cross as a sacrifice so that we can be made right with God. And once we've grasped the wonder of it all, realized what an amazing thing he's done for us. Taking up that cross no longer seems so difficult because we know that we can follow him, trusting that ultimately all will be well. So I wonder, what are the crosses in your life? Are your eyes truly fixed on Jesus? And how are you serving the servant king? <laughs>